stage. Well, we were on stage <laughs> performing, and I was the first one to smell something strange. I didn't know what it was, so I looked around to see if there was anybody else who, you know, was uneasy about what was happening. And everybody was just there going. And um, to my surprise, it was tear gas. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know what was happening, and um, the fence tore down, and it was just one chaos, and this it was looking like just war. And we ran off the stage and just running for our lives. Oh, what a blessing we have received to have been so privileged to share such wonderful moments with such a man. Oh, what a man, a unique style yet so much like a child. When, when that song expresses mm -hmm. the moments and everything that we shared with Bob throughout the years we recorded and toured with him. When you just met Bob and started working with him or collaborating with him, did you see that star quality in him immediately? Definitely. I personally could recognize that this was not an ordinary man. I usually say that I'm glad that I gave him flowers while he was alive because he was just unbelievable. You know, he was just unique, different in every way. If you saw Bob Marley in a crowded airport and you look at this man, you would want to look at him a second time because there was something about this man that no one could understand. He was just different. And I know that Bob was truly a prophet sent. You know, I recognize that from the beginning. What would you say was the highlight of your working of you working with Bob what was something that stand out beyond all of your experience I know you had a tremendous experience going into uh, Zimbabwe but you tell us about your uh, your unforgettable memory with, uh, 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 one highlight of it that one in particular is one that I'll never forget because you and I knew that this man he, he sang all his songs with such conviction <laughs> And I remember he did this song that says, um, no, we know who are the real revolutionary. Right. Well, he quoted those lines to us in Zimbabwe when we all ran away and left him. <laughs> what, what, what was happening when you all ran away and leave Bob alone on stage? Well, we were on stage performing <laughs> yeah. and I was the first one to smell something strange. I didn't know what it was, so I looked around to see if there was anybody else who, you know, was uneasy about what was happening. And everybody was just there going. And um, to my surprise, it was tear gas. And we didn't know what was happening, and um, the fence tore down, and it was just one chaos, and this it was looking like just war. And we ran off the stage, and just running for our lives, and we saw kids, people being trampled in the stadium. And there was this um, brother with us who was born in South Africa, Joe Stabliski. He was working with Bob, and when we heard Joe saying that he has never seen this in all his life, we heard that they were just trying to get black, all the black people in one area and started a war to kill, kill off everybody. So we just ran for our <laughs> lives, leaving Bob on stage. Was he, did he keep on singing? Well, we don't know what was happening because we were just thinking about our safety. And we ran through the streets, through the cars and everything, and uh, we reached, finally reached where we were staying. And at the end of the day, when everything was calmed down and Bob came to the house and he saw us and he looked at all three of us and he said, now we know who are the real revolutionary. <laughs> you know, Bob, so bad, you, know? <laughs> you had a tremendous sense of humor, wouldn't you say so? Yes, <laughs> exceptionally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking with Marcia Griffiths and rocking and rocking and rockers and she's just going to introduce the next video for us. Will you please, Marcia? This next video, <laughs> I know you're going to enjoy. This is I-3 with Buffalo Soldier. Do you think I am? 